Hey Arden learners, welcome back again. This is Caroline Ma'am from Biotechnica. So everybody wants to learn a concept very simple but very significant. So I have come up with yet another topic which will be very simple but very significant for your examination. So if you are a CSIR net uh, aspirant who are going to write your examination, this is really going to help you. So I'm going to talk about unit number six, plant physiology. And the topic that I'm going to talk about is AS pathway and ASP AT pathway. Let's talk this one and let's understand what this topic is all about. You can literally see the differences between AS pathway and ASP AT pathway. This pathway you usually see in nitrogen metabolisms only. So it's just a continuation after nitrogen fixation, biological nitrogen fixation. You will be talking about the assimilation of assimilation of ammonia into amino acid into amino acids so usually a plant want a nitrogen source to make an amino acid only suppose if we have to talk about a nitrogen is fixed as ammonia very specifically inside the plant in case of a symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria and this ammonia will be converted into amino acid and this amino acid can be acting as a precursor for making any kind of proteins and some of the amino acids will be stored also. So these two pathways we are going to talk is all about after ammonia is formed what are the steps. The first pathway is going to be aspergin synthetase pathway. So we have to understand what is aspergin. Aspergin is going to be a basic amino acid. Synthetase you have to understand the differences. Synthetase means they utilize ATP. ATP is used. But if you are going to ask me synthesis, synthesis does not use ATP. Synthesis, no ATP required. But synthetases, if you're going to see synthetases in any of the reaction, they usually utilize ATP. So in this pathway, we'll be studying ATP utilization. And aspergin synthetases means we are going to synthesize aspargin by utilizing ATP. By using ATP, we are going to synthesize aspargin. So before going in for it, we'll understand what is aspartate amino transferase pathway. In this pathway, aspartate will be coming from glutamate, which means we will be doing a trans amination process. So this enzyme which we can say aspartate amino transferase enzyme is very helpful for trans amination process. So first let's talk about aspargin synthetase pathway and then we will be understanding what is this aspartate amino transferase pathway. So let's study about aspargin synthetases. So before going for all the first three points let's go for the equation. So since if it's not visible, I'm going to write it over here. Just understand glutamine. You can literally see glutamine. So glutamine is going to have an amine group because it is a basic amino acid. And this glutamine actually comes from nitrogen metabolism. What would happen is glutamate, which is an acidic amino acid. They don't have amine group at the last carbon, we can say. They accept ammonia which has come from nitrogen metabolism, nitrogen into ammonia. And this ammonia will be given to glutamate. And now this glutamate is converted into glutamine. Now, this glutamine is a basic amino acid. There is another amino acid called aspartate. So aspartate is going to be acidic amino acid, acidic amino acid. And what we're going to do, since this has amine group onto carbon number five, what we are going to do, this aspartate is not going to have an amine group at carbon number 4. What we are going to do, we are going to transfer this amine group from glutamine to aspartate. And now we will get aspargin. Aspargin. Now this aspargin will become what? Basic amino acid, which means they have amine group. Now, where do they have got this amine group? They actually got an amine group from glutamine. 
glutamine and they have got it and now you will get glutamate glutamate this step is actually a reversible step so what is the enzyme which is involved in this step aspergin what are you doing you are actually synthesizing aspergin so it is called aspergin synthetases and by utilizing atp so what we have done we have actually synthesized an aspergin from a glutamine which is a basic amino acid we have transferred an amine group from glutamine to aspartate and we have made a aspergin plus glutamate and this reaction is actually catalyzed by aspergin synthetases so let's understand the first point which is given the first point says aspergin synthetases catalyzes the transfer of an amide group from amide nitrogen from whom glutamine and what they have formed aspergin or we can very specifically say a glutamine combining with aspartate to form aspergin plus glutamate aspergin plus glutamate and this reaction is the utilization of atp step and why we have made this aspergin why aspergin is synthesized we know any amino acid is a precursor for protein but is it only the role next point says the aspergin serves not only as a protein precursor but also a key component for nitrogen transport the purpose of making an amino acid is to make a protein and also for the nitrogen transport so this aspergin is not only helpful for making proteins but also responsible for nitrogen transport and this aspergin can also be stored in the vacuoles it is also for transportation of nitrogen source also stored in the vacuoles and where do you see this aspergin synthetases enzyme you literally see in leaves because it's been transported in a leaves so you have aspergin in the cytosol of the leaf as well as in the cytosol of the root and since you will see nitrogen metabolism taking place in symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria carried out by nitrogen fixing bacteria you can see in the root nodules also so nitrogen fixing nodules so this is all about aspergin synthetases you can literally see this image here you see glutamine which is a basic amino acid which they have a amine group onto the last carbon don't calculate this amine which is common for all the amino acids so this amine is actually present in the fifth carbon and next you are going to see aspartate which is a acidic amino acid and this amine is going to be transferred here by utilizing atp which is aspergin synthetases is involved and now what will happen since this glutamine has given its amino acids or amide to aspartate now you will get aspergin plus glutamate and i told you this aspergin will be transported and it will be stored now our question is what happened to this glutamate molecule and that is the next step how this glutamate is going to be again converted into aspartate okay that's the next step so what's the next enzyme involved in the next step is aspartate amino transferase pathway or the enzyme first let's understand what we have done in the previous case we have glutamine plus aspartate partate and then we have made aspergin plus glutamate glutamate so this is basic i'm writing it as b this is basic amino acid which means they have amine group these two are going to be acidic amino acid and the enzyme is we can say aspergin synthetases so atp is used now i told you this is been transported and stored what happened to this glutamate the next step is going to be glutamate which is acidic amino acid i'm going to talk about this one glutamate which is an acidic amino acid combines with an other molecule called oxaloacetate which is a four carbon this is five carbon and it will be converted into again aspartate aspartate plus two oxo glutarate so now what we have done we have made aspartate 
So this step is the next step. So whatever the glutamate has found in this step will be utilized here and it combines with oxaloacetate and now the enzyme is aspartate amino transferases and you got again aspartate and there's a probability this aspartate can go and combine with glutamine definitely but very specifically we are going to talk all the points over here so if you understand that every point is going to be easy once assimilated into glutamine yes you have glutamine here and you have glutamate here which is the step they are talking the previous step once assimilated into a glutamine and then you have made a glutamate the nitrogen can be incorporated or changed into another amino acid and this amino this process is called transamination and catalyzed by which enzyme aspartate amino transferases enzyme but is this enzyme is going to be a hollow enzyme or active enzyme no only if they have a cofactor all the transamination reaction requires a cofactor like vitamin b6 if vitamin b6 is present then this enzyme become a hollow enzyme that's going to be the second point the third point is where is this enzyme present this enzyme is present in the cytosol of the leaf as well as it is involved in the root nodules also so here you can see glutamate plus oxaloacetate gives aspartate plus 2 oxoglutarate again this aspartate and they are interconnected so this step or this two pathway actually make us to understand after a ammonium is formed or ammonia is fixed by the bi biological nitrogen fixation it is converted into many amino acid the first is going to be the production of glutamine and then the glutamine is going to be reacting with aspartate to form uh, aspartin plus glutamate with the help of a first enzyme called aspartin synthetases and now we are left with glutamate and this glutamate is again going to be converted into aspartate with the help of aspartate amino transferases enzyme plus a cofactor in it so what we have understood in today's class is the difference between as pathway or we can say aspartin synthetase pathway or asp at pathway I am sure that video is helpful for you if you really like this video please like share and subscribe to our channel and if you really like this video you can also share this to your friend who can actually will be helpful for all of them and very specifically you can join by technica where you're going to get all the concepts very simple and you're going to get all the information in one nutshell thank you all of you for joining and i'm going to meet you back again in the next video